there is room in this world for all of you. And if you can form a study group of three or four students and help each other, you will all get into medical school. Welcome to the Medical School Headquarters YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, and I'm here every week to help you on your journey into and through medical school. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification so that you get notified of our great videos every week. So I wanna jump right in to our pre-med study tips today. Tip number one is the most obvious one, but it's the one that we struggle with. Even I struggle with this all the time. Now I'm not studying for tests anymore, but I'm trying to create content for you almost every day of the week. And this thing right here gets in the way. And every time it buzzes and beeps and falls to the floor, it distracts you. And every time that distraction happens, you are pulled away from what you are doing. And the science has shown that it takes like 15 minutes to get back into the flow state. And so if you get four notifications in an hour, your hour is shot. Your studying for that hour is basically useless. But if you try to turn it off, right? You turn the notifications off, you turn it upside down, you throw it on your desk, but you see it there, you know it's there. Guess what? Science shows that that's just as bad for you. So as you are studying, make sure that you have dedicated time to study. Make sure during that dedicated time, you are distraction free. Turn off your phone, put it in another room, leave it at home. I know it sounds crazy, but guess what? You will be more productive, which means less required time to study. So another way to be productive as well as you have your phone away, is something called the Pomodoro Technique. You turn off your phone and you're like, but I don't wanna be away from it for five hours. Well, you don't have to be. You can set a timer for 25 minutes, for 30 minutes, for 50 minutes, and know during that time your phone is off, it's in another room, you're distraction free, and for 25 minutes, all you're going to do is focus on your material. One of the best ways to know that you know the material is to teach it to someone else. Now, if you go and you watch some med school vloggers, they'll actually like have a stuffed animal on their dining room table and they'll teach the material to their stuffed animal. If you can set up a study group, teach the material to each other. That is a very easy way to make sure that you know the material. If you know it well enough to teach it, then you understand it. Spaced repetition is a huge learning style, learning technique, to help you really understand the material, to help your brain absorb it as quickly as possible. Now, spaced repetition was made popular really with Anki, the flashcard app. The popular app on your computer and on your smartphone allowed students to import flashcards into the app and go through them while they're standing in line, while they're at the gym, on the treadmill, wherever they may be and try to learn the flashcards on the go. The key to Anki though, is not just importing huge databases of flashcards. The key to using flashcards is to write them yourself. That's where a lot of the learning takes place. And a lot of students try to shortcut that process by using other people's flashcards. Now, when I was a student at the University of Florida, one of the biggest things that we did when we were studying for tests was to go and get the old tests. That was the best way to kind of understand what may be coming on our exams, is to look at history. Now, I don't want you to go hack into your professor's computer to get their old exams, but if it is known that these old exams are out there and you can buy them from the bookstore or wherever, and it's, it's a legal thing to do, your professor knows it's out there, then make sure that you are utilizing those resources. The same thing with the MCAT. One of the best ways to prepare for the MCAT is to take full length practice exams. Now this next tip is a little bit controversial, but I believe in different learning styles. Now some people out there may contradict that, but when I was in medical school, I struggled a ton learning the material. And that's because I was trying to study the same way that my now wife was studying. She loved to go back and just read the notes from the lectures. We had a, a note-taking service, and she would read the notes from the, the lectures 
and write her own notes, read the books, and learn that way. I love podcasts, and now I know that I love podcasts because I learn by listening. And I would have done much better in medical school if I went to lectures to absorb the material first by listening and then going back to a book and then going into the notes and trying to learn that way and add on top of the material that I have already absorbed through listening in lecture. So make sure that you are testing different ways of learning as you are going through this process to see what may click for you. Study groups. Now you may think, I don't want to help my fellow pre-med student. And I will tell you that helping your fellow pre-med student is going to help you too. Now on the MCAT podcast I did with Next Step Test Prep that I currently do with Next Step Test Prep, we talked about the best way to study for the MCAT. And guess what? It's not by buying a course or buying tutoring. It's by using a study group. Find other students out there as you are going through this process. Find other students who are strong in areas where you are weak, where you are strong in areas where they are weak, and help each other. There are plenty of seats to medical school for those who are qualified for those seats. Look at your studying process. Now, as I talked earlier about different learning styles, there are different things that you can do, different styles of processing all of the material that you're being given. If you go to lecture, Maybe you can try pre-reading the notes before you go to lecture. A lot of professors put out their PowerPoint slides before lecture. Read through the slides. Ask your own questions as you are reading through the slides. See if the professor answers those questions, and if they don't, ask them during lecture. After lecture, if you have a note-taking service or you wrote your own notes, go back and maybe rephrase those notes. Take notes on your notes try different things and see what works best for you. There are always going to be days where you don't feel like studying, where you feel like you don't have the energy, you don't have the motivation. Those are the days that will define your success or your failure. On those days where you don't wanna do anything, dedicate five minutes to opening up a book, to opening up your notes, and just do five minutes. If all you do is five minutes, that's a win. But a lot of times you'll go, well, I already have the book open. I already have my notes open. I can do a little bit more. I have more energy than I thought. On those days, those are huge successes. All right, guys, we covered a ton of tips in this video. If you have any extra tips that we didn't cover, I would love to hear about them below. Leave a comment on this video. And if this video brought you any value, I would love a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification to be notified of more great videos coming out every week.